Welcome to another episode of the Abit Retro Refix and Happy New Year. It's 2022. Wow. And the time flown. Well, we're going to start off the year by doing Jiffy DOS on the 1571. And I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do that. Uh, up and coming in the later, later videos this year, we'll be doing the mod for the sound on the Spectrum Plus 3 that was in the previous videos. Um, I've got a binotone that I'm going to try and sort out the RF first and then potentially look into having a look at um, composite modding that one as well. So we've got a few things to be going on. Um, I don't know if you can see it just there or not. Somebody asked me the other day um, what this is at the side here. Um, this is a Commodore PC-10. Um, it does have the hard drive in there, so technically it's a PC-20. Um, the monitor screen doesn't work, but the bottom unit does. So we're going to be having a look at that in future videos as well. So we've got quite a bit of stuff coming up in the future. But at the moment, we're going to head off and we're going to have a look at this 1571 installing Jiffy DOS. So let's get to it. Right, so what I've done is I've loaded Ghostbusters up. This is just standard, as you can see on the screen. I'm going to pan you up. It's just a normal Commodore Basic. And in the 1571 disk drive, is just a standard kernel ROM that's in there. So I'm going to pull out the standard kernel ROM, and what we're going to do is we're going to put Jiffy DOS in here, um, and then we're going to do a speed test and see what it takes, or how long it takes, for it to load Ghostbusters on the Jiffy DOS. As I said, I've just run it now, so I've got the figures, and I'll put that up on the on screen after we've done it, and then you can see the comparison. So, what we need to do is switch that off, because we don't need the Commodore anymore at the moment. Let's bring the 1541 round here. Let's just turn it off, take the power out, because we don't need the power. So there's four screws under the bottom. Once you've taken them four screws out, you can just get out of the back of the, the lid here, and you can just lift the lid up and lift it out from the front. This is the main power board, so be very, very careful and make sure it's not turned on. This is the 1571 drive that I picked up from the retro games market at Doncaster Dome. This made a little 50 pound bargain. Um, the only thing that was wrong with this is was the port here was shorted out, the main connector port, so I've stolen this one and, and fitted one from a 1541 and it worked fine. So to get to the kernel ROM with four screws, there's one there, one there, one there and one there. Once that's done, you can literally get out of the back of this board here, you can lift it carefully and if you're very, very, very careful and just lay it down there gently. And up there, you can see, we've got the kernel. I've got to be careful because there is a screw missing over this back side. I can't put a screw in. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to hold the board down. And that is a standard kernel ROM. That's just standard. If you notice, if you look, it's a Toshiba chip. Um, and if you peel that sticker back, it'll tell you that this chip is a 27256. So that's what we need, is a 27256. So, I could, in theory, just dump this and then just program this one with the Jiffy DOS. But I want to keep this original chip anyway. It's kind of original, it looks like original, but it's just an EEPROM. Okay, so let's go over to the computer. Right, so we've got the software running. So what I've got selected up here, which is an AM272568 pin dip. Always de-check the check ID, take that away, um, and then we can go up to device. 
So what I'm going to do is, this is our original kernel that we've just taken out. I'm just going to pop it into a chipper, a chip burner, and we'll, we'll dump what's on there. So what I did is, because I had Jiffy DOS in my other 1571, I took the Jiffy DOS chip out um, and dumped that Jiffy DOS. So if we do a, a read, so we've got 15 minutes, we've got a read there, um, and we can see that we've got a Jiffy DOS software here, all in hexadecimal. So if you want now, you could save that and reprogram it on that chip there. So what I did is, I took the original Jiffy DOS, we're going to reread this one now. So this is completely changed, look. The name at the top up there, look, we've got David G. Burger. Um, I think if you scroll down here, you will find Jiffy somewhere. AJ. It's a long way down, but you, you will find Jiffy DOS written in here somewhere. But this is definitely Jiffy DOS. So, what I did is, I went to the device. We've done the read, because it's just given us that. So if I go to file now and go save, and we'll call it a 1571J, just so we know what that is. So I've dumped. So now we've got, oops. So now I've got a Jiffy DOS here that we needed. Yep. So still make sure that checksum's disappeared. Make sure when you go into device, that you do a blank check. If I do a blank check now, it's going to fail on this Jiffy DOS because it's already programmed. So what I would do now is, now it's all loaded up in there and I've got my blank chip in there, I would hit um, program, which I've already done, so I can't do it. It will fail because it's not blank. So hit program, let it do its thing, let it do a verify, and that's it. That's your Jiffy DOS done. As I said, if you can't get it to work, make sure that this checksum ID down the bottom left corner here is unchecked. Because otherwise, it will not work. I'll show you, look, look. Let's check that back up again. Let's go to device. Let's read that device. And it comes up with error. Straight away. So if I cancel that off, take the checksum off, go to device, go to read, and it reads it perfectly, look. So just make sure that that check ID is off. And then you burn your Jiffy DOS, which we've done. And then obviously make a sticker and stick Jiffy DOS. Sticker on top of that chip. And then we can take it away from there because we've now got our Jiffy DOS chip. So I'm just going to pan you back to the 1571. So you can see there, as an empty socket, if you look at these chips, all the notches are on the left. So we know that there's a notch on this chip, which is here. We need to put in on the left. So we'll put that in there like that. Make sure all the legs are correct. And that's a Jiffy DOS in. So all I'm going to do now is put these screws back in, build it back up, and then we're going to test it for a speed test. And let's have a look, see how fast it goes. Sorry for the artifacts, um, which you've seen on screen there. I can't. <laughs> it's what happens when you record a screen. If I move it up and down, you can see, look, we just pan it up and down. You can see the artifacts moving. Anyway, so you can see that we've got top of the cross of the screen there is 8 bit retro refix Jiffy DOS 6.1. We're going to press at now because we've got a fast loader in to see what the driver responds as. And its driver is now responding as Jiffy DOS 5.1. So we'll set it off now. I'll put the other time up and I'll put the timer up as well so you can just see how quick this goes now. We'll do the load. Star. Can't use the fast load options because it will not load. You have to put load star 8.1 for Ghostbusters to actually work. So I'm just going to fire that up now and let's uh, see how fast it goes.
Bottoms Best Dinners! <laughs> So you can see there, that's one minute. One minute, it's gone from three minutes to one minute and that's using a 1571 on a Commodore 64. We just turn that sound down, guys. So yeah, that's a 1571 on a Commodore 64. Jiffy DOS on the 64, Jiffy DOS now in the 1571. And it's, it's a third of the speed. So we got three minutes, didn't we, on the, on the normal run from one minute. So there you go, guys. That's how you install Jiffy DOS into a 1571. Well, wow. Wow, what did you think of that? Yeah, Ghostbusters. Took three minutes under its normal steam and, and down to a minute with Jiffy DOS installed. That's awesome. That's a third of the time to, you know. Um, Ghostbusters, I used that. Um, I know, I know, I know. I know. Ghostbusters, um, but Ghostbusters is very very finicky on how it loads, fast loaders it doesn't like and things like that, that's why you saw in the video that I had to do the load, comma 8, comma 1 for it to do that. So yeah, that, that is absolutely awesome. So thanks again for watching another episode of the 8-Bit Retro Refix, and if you've enjoyed these videos, please give me a like and subscribe, it really does help, the channel's growing well. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye!